the whole process of filming the you know recovery of the trains is a treasure trove. When Ibrahim has brought me to the studio where the, the, let me say digital studio. <laughs> there are so many studios. Yes, exactly. So this one we so what we are lifting the the locomotive. Yes, exactly. But so the crane that lifted it, there's yeah, a story around it. There's a story around it. It's a very old crane there. Normally when there are derailments and others, they use this crane. They take this crane on the track. It's a tr it's a train in itself. But currently the train aspect of it is not working. So what happens is that they need another locomotive in order to pull it. So they pull it and then they turn it on. But it takes a very long time to turn on. It takes like a day for them to like turn it on. And when it turns on, they can use it to lift things as heavy as 80 tons. So when we were taking this huge locomotive out, because we had to, on one of the videos, like you can see here, um, we had to, yeah, it, we had to take it into one of the rooms, mm -hmm. like uh, this space. Right. Yeah, we had there are these massive cranes there which can lift the train and suspend it. So this train is being suspended right now, and the truck had to go into it. We had to put pieces of wood where the truck would go into it. So when the truck went there, then they then now put the train, uh, the locomotive on top of it. So, so you when that crane, yes, to put the train, yes, on top of the truck. So when the because this place is not designed for trucks, trucks. to go into. Yeah. So when the truck was coming out, because two of the ties got stuck in between the rail lines <laughs> because they, they have two, 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 two ties because of the axle load and so the, the the rim got bent so we were afraid that if the truck struggled it would destroy all its rims and ties so we had to bring in that crane to basically do what uh, like in this case um, yeah we had to bring it to lift the train together with the, the with rail, the, rail. The, to, the train together with the truck. We need to, we need to lift ah. both of them out of the thing. Yeah. So wait, after you put the train on the track, you needed the crane yes, exactly. to lift both of, the both of them and yes. the train. Yes, so you see we've, we've held the, the truck. Yeah. So we're lifting both of them at the same time. We're lifting it out of the, the, the rail because the, the ties were stuck in between the rails. And this crane is Britain, British made? No, this is a German train. This a German train. Yeah, yeah, German train, German uh, everything. Most of the machines they are German. German. Yes. So how how it took one day. To well, just one day to take this thing to lift this thing. I off. mean, even starting the crane. Yes, yes. Was one day. Yes. And then lifting. It yes, yes. Was a different yeah, day. Yeah, yeah. It, it took a lot of time just to do this, but it was necessary. But the thing is that the workers are very hard working, and they 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 are the ones who understand these machines. So they did a lot of work just to get all of this done. Yeah. Show me the whole second e train yard again. I I saw that in one of those shots. It's massive. <laughs> Is, is it that it's not running? It's no, it's running. It's running. But it's just that there's a lot of work that needs to be done there. The government really needs to pump a lot of money into this space. Like, yeah, so it's really, it's massive. Well, this is massive. Yeah. And a lot of these were built by the British back in the early 20th century. Wow. So there are machines there that are used for creating all kinds of things that normally... That? Let me see. Is there a factory? Yeah, so this is a, it's an Israeli company. It's called Amani. Okay. They were the ones who were contracted by the Ghana Railway to restore part of the railway. Wow. Yeah, so they produce, like the restoration of the lines and other things were all done by them. Okay. Yes. So the factory is what is on the right? Yes, yes. So the factory is used to restore aspects so of the railway. The Here, this is called the wagon, where they have the diesel room. That's where the crane came from. And also, like, the workers will restore trains there. Yeah. They also, they have a timber room, this area where they can cut wood for the railway Trucks. sleepers, the tracks, and other things. Uh, um, there is a train here, it's called Coach Zero. When Kwame Nkrumah, in, uh, when, uh, during the uh, independence, when Queen Elizabeth came to Ghana, yeah. that was a train that Kwame Nkrumah and Queen Elizabeth sat in to travel around. And it's there. Oh. I'm trying to also get that train so we can restore it and things like that. Yeah, so there are a lot of really important things here and there. And also there are farms in between. I really like the farm areas in between, like the plantain, plantain, yeah, plantain yeah, cassava yeah. and others. Cassava, and here they had the, the foundry, the diesel room, like the machine room, blah, blah, blah. Uh, where they can rip, like, the brakes of the train. Sometimes when they are damaged, they can cast new brakes and then they, they can fix. Yeah, so if there's a part of a uh, train that is damaged, which cannot be, we cannot buy it because maybe these trains, they don't produce the parts anymore. The workers have this ingenuity where they can reproduce the parts themselves. For the locomotive, you had this shot showing it's been welded. Yes. Because earlier you mentioned that yes. it, it was, 
was so to so yes, yes, yes. and so you had to get another welder or group of welders to put it all together. Yes. Let me let me see those. How is the process like? Yeah, so those ones, the crane, the the locomotives have been cut into pieces. So in here, you can and we're see. Going to sell them. Yeah, so they, these ones have been sold to a scrap dealer in the second day. So it was the first uh, locomotives that I bought actually. So I bought them from the scrap dealer, and then we were, I said we're looking for a welder who could weld it. All the welders were quoting ridiculous prices. They, they wanted a ten thousand, uh, fifty thousand, fifty thousand. Yeah, but these guys, Charlie, they had they were the same guys who had cut it into pieces Applies. with a blow touch so this time around they needed like the welded machine and then we got a generator and then 2000 cities they welded the entire thing so yeah we're together so with my uncle how did I sell this to you for it was like 306 40,000 or so the two locomotives for the two locomotives yeah. Yes, you mentioned. yeah meanwhile maybe if the price that they bought it was like maybe five or six times cheaper than it was yeah, yeah. it's ridiculous like the scrap dealers they just want more but uh, as I said before later on I worked with the railway ministry mm -hmm. in order to get access to some of the locomotives and coaches for the projects here. Yeah. yeah. So this is the wagon. Yes. This is the yeah. foundry. Yeah. And all the other, they have storerooms where they keep objects and all kinds of other things. Yeah. 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 So all this is still part of the company, the money. Yeah. This is giving me some China fuel where you see those bullet trains, trains. <laughs> big train station yeah. and it's flying. Yeah. But oh dear. Yeah. <laughs> There's a, lot of, there's a lot of promise in spaces like this. Like we just go in there to weld the thing that would have been demarcated as scraps back together again to transport them to Tamale for the museum. Yeah, it's for me, I think it's important. No, it's not scraps. If we bought something that they've cut into pieces and then we welded it to a point where we can lift them together. Because in the history, when we're bringing these trains, most of them, they always lifted it without the boogies right but this so is, the was the first time the ties? yeah the ties this is the time that we lifted everything so we're even even testing because the guy said they had never lifted any train together so that tested the power the power of the, the, the crane the machine even itself and for me why not yeah why not so you can see all the scars and other things yeah. in it yeah i like that so, yeah the scars i'm telling you i really if i'm ever going to write music will come here like actually <laughs> jazz of scars it's not easy it's not easy healing the yes, it's not easy. So now when you see the the things moving on the, yeah. the bridge in relation to like the market spaces and all that, I think it's really interesting. Yeah. So like it took about four days. Yes, to, just being on the road. To pack this. Yes, four days packing it and then an extra four days, three, four days just driving all the way to Tamale. Yes, exactly. So if you come to Red Clay and you see the train sitting there pretty, they've been through restoration. Yes, a lot. And we're practicing. still restoring them, yes. yes. And we're still restoring them, yeah. And for me, that's the that's where the core of the work is, the restoration process. How do we breathe life back into things that ordinarily we wouldn't have thought that they have any sense of value? I love this one. This is impressive. This is good. This mouse was up. So like, yeah, really, those who are saying these are scraps, man, let's, let's move on with our lives. Yeah, yes, exactly. What should we tell them? Oh, well, there is, as young people, I think that there's quite a lot of work that we can do with the Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think as young people, there are a lot of work that we need to do within our country. There are a lot of things that seem to be in despair. There seems to be a lot of hopelessness and all that. But when we really take our time and we look at things, we realize that there's so much contribution that we can make, especially coming from the position that we're coming from. Because we're a generation that was born into debt. We were born into a system where there was so much crisis and all that. But at the same time, it also should be the same system that gives us hope to think that, oh, we maybe the education and everything that we have and the experiences that we have it's possible that we can breathe life back into systems that are broken so for me i think that when i see something that is broken it even inspires me to think that oh i can make a difference in it i can undo the brokenness of it so 
Yeah, we can only do the best that we can. Sweet. I love that. See, let me sit next to greatness. Oh. I understand so that uh, my brokenness shall be made. Good day. Thank you for watching this. You need to subscribe to the channel if you have not done so yet. And kindly and share this video, like it, and drop your comment down. I'd love to hear from you, right? Okay, so until the next video, keep sharing this. Let's keep talking restoration, giving up, and let's keep doing what's important. Whenever you see anything broken, think about how you can restore, how you can bring it back to life, and then, you know, inspire people with records of hope. My name is Kenneth. I'll see you again.